Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to show you one of the best decks to play to Legend right now in Hearthstone. In early Rise of Shadows meta, rank 1 is dominated by half warrior, half rogue. And here is a deck that is capable of beating them both. And this is Coco Sasa's Mech Paladin. I've been looking into Mech Paladin myself, but I've been trying to go to Control Route, because mid-range routes didn't seem to quite work. But Coco Sasa found a way to make the mid-range Mech Paladin work, and the way to do that was to start with the Secret Package. So, Secret Package early game combined with Mech mid-game, and no Mechano X, just pure tempo. There is Mechanical Whelp for some longevity, and of course, there is Kangor's Endless Army. This deck doesn't use any of those cheap mechs. None of that bad mechs, so you don't get any bad resurrects from your Kangors. You're going to get good resurrects from Kangors. And the early game is being carried by the secret package. This is actually a trend that is becoming more common in Paladin right now, because there are various big Paladin builds around that use dual and stuff, big minions, and they also use secrets in order to carry the early game. That is the early game that Paladin has been given, so that's the early game Paladin is going to use. The overall strategy of the deck is to go in with the secret early game, stay in the game with those, and then start working on these mechs. So there's a number of magnetic mechs in the deck. Anoya module is magnetic, Wargear is magnetic, Ciliax is magnetic. Every mech in the deck, except for the mechanical wealth, is magnetic. You can combine the magnetic mechs together. Sometimes you want to play an Anoya module on the board, then maybe magnetize a Wargear on it if it survives. Sometimes you want to play Wargear or Ciliax on the board. Sometimes you try to get that mechanical whelp magnetized stuff onto that. And the secret package can really help you as well, because, for example, Ciliax. If Ciliax is the only mech you have played, and you can get Ciliax go through redemption, then you have a chance that you can actually get multiple Ciliaxes from your Kangor. So there's a lot of decisions to make with the deck. What mechs do you want to resurrect? Silence is not very common deck card at the moment, so you're pretty free to magnetize stuff. But in case you happen to worry about silence, remember that if something gets silenced, the magnetic minion that's put on top is going to disappear, but the base minion is going to be there. So if you magnetize Ciliax on a war gear or war gear on a Ciliax, then it does matter both for the immediate effect when the silence has gone off and after the mech has died for the effect that it has on Kangor's endless army. The deck includes a little bit of card draw, there's Harrison Jones which is both weapon removal and card draw, and there's Countess Ashmore. And Countess Ashmore draw a Rush, Lifesteal and Death Rattle card from your deck. The only card with Rush and Lifesteal in this deck is Ciliax, and the Death Rattle cards are Mechanical Whelp and Tyrion Fordring. So much of the time Ashmore might just draw you one card, but also Ashmore is 100% reliable tutor for your Ciliax, which can be very important. And Ciliax can really heal you up, because for example, if you can get a Mechanical Whelp on the board, if you can get that to die, you get the 7-7, seven, seven, you can Ciliax on that. Even if you have just the Whelp on the board, and it's the start of your turn, Whelp can attack. Whelp can attack into something, Whelp can die, 7-7 seven, seven comes out. If you magnetize Ciliax on that 7-7, seven, seven, it immediately has Rush, and it can attack again. So this kind of very, very tempo-based, very mid-range style version of Mech Paladin. One card of note is Aldo Peacekeeper, and this card is especially important against Rogue right now. Rogue decks are tempo rogue decks that love to build big Edwins, but Aldo Peacekeeper can completely negate the effect of that Edwin on the game. It doesn't do a whole lot in many other matchups, but in the Rogue matchup it is crucial. As for the mulligans with this deck, you're always, always looking for Bellringer Sentry. Bellringer Sentry is a key card. Battlecry and Death Rattle put a secret from your deck into the battlefield. So you thin your deck of those secrets, you get secrets played. Just an incredible card. Then you're typically looking for your main early game secret synergy cards. Sun River Spy, Mysterious Blade. The secrets in this deck mainly only activate if you have a board. Hidden Wisdom is the only exception, but that requires the opponent to play three cards, so that doesn't happen very often. So in a fast matchups, when you're facing against aggro decks, you want to get value very quickly, then if you are offered Blade or Spy, you can also keep one secret alongside them. And you play that secret on one, and then you can play Blade or Spy on two. 
because the secret is very unlikely to be triggered. If you're facing a control deck, then you might not even want to keep a secret. I'm going to draw some secret at some point anyway, and getting something out on two is not that important. The rest of the cards in Mulligan, well, they depend. I want to keep Peacekeeper against Rogue, because I have found out that Peacekeeper is extremely important in beating Edwin Van Cleave. And I like to keep Consecration against Token decks, I like to keep Harrison Jones against Weapon decks. Shaman currently doesn't really run a lot of weapons, so I'm not keeping it against Shaman but against stuff like Paladin, Hunter, Warrior. And if I know that the matchup is going to be very slow, then Mechanical Whelp can be a good idea to keep already in the Mulligan, because it is the most powerful mech in the deck. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go take a look at Mech Paladin in action. Yeah, that really is not the right deck. Deck Tracker, come on. Oh, Deck Tracker recognized the deck. Excellent. Excellent work, Deck Tracker. There's no reason for me to play the Redemption out there now, is there? Probably not yet, no. I don't think it helps me. Rissa does not get redeemed. So this is going to be a token, token druid, almost certainly. If this was some other secret, there was a chance for me to play it, but not really the redemption. This looks like it's going to be coin sentry in the sentry. That looks like the likely approach. I believe my opponent is playing some form of token druid, and I happen to have a consecration in hand, which can be useful. Using a Belgian of Ancients this way is really curious though. Okay, then we coin the Bell Ringer Sentry. And we get a Never Surrender. Not a secret I really wanted there. Sure, it makes this a 3 6, but hitting just one minion isn't that great. Yeah, hitting just one minion isn't that great. Of course, Consecration is pretty sweet here. So it's time to consecrate this board. And I believe I will trade away the 1-1 one -one token too. Let's just kill them all. I hope he doesn't have a second Whispering Woods. Because that would be extremely awkward. Even Force of Nature is pretty good here though. Lots of stuff he can do. I could get a Redemption out there together with another Bell Ring Sentry. If I play the Redemption first, that ensures that I don't get another Redemption from the deck. Well, now I can't get another Redemption from the deck anyway. I mean, I could also play Risa with two secrets. Redemption and Hidden Wisdom. Is he going to play three cards in a turn? Very unlikely at this point. There's only Never Surrender and all the Defense Matrix left in the deck. I think it's another Bell Ring Sentry time. I hope that I get the Auto Defense Matrix, but I get the Never Surrender. I really didn't want the Never Surrender, because I don't have the quantity of minions that I would like to have at this point. Yeah, just getting held on these is not that awesome. And he managed to hit the... He managed to hit the additional health. That's also really, really good. This is a major problem for me. I can kill this one. I can't kill the Vargot. That is a major problem. So I can play the Rissa. I can play the Hidden Wisdom. I can Hero Power. I could hit into Vargot. Or I can hit Face. But at 7 mana, it's going to be tricky to contain that. I think I'll take the hit into Vargot. Let's try that. Let's try this approach. But not, I mean, if he had lost the 50 50 roll, and Vargot would have remained a 2 6. This would have been so much nicer. Now it's much more difficult. On the other hand, if he casts multiple spells, then only one of them is going to be get from. Received again from the Vargot. He could have a swipe, which would be strong here. Reporting. 
But does he have a swipe? I don't know yet if he has a swipe or not. Well, that was weak. That was really weak. Even with the double... Double Trent summoning going on over there. I probably do need to kill the Vargot, right? Otherwise he will cast so many spells next turn. 7, 8, 9 to face. And if he just casts tokens. But I have Hidden Wisdom, I have Auto Defense Matrix. I could also try to set up a Redemption play here. Or I can just play Ashmore. I actually think I want the Ashmore out there. Grab the Zilliax from the deck. But I do think I need to kill the Vargot. So I've Hidden Wisdom, I have Auto Defense Matrix. I think I like those cards enough. I'm just going I'm just going face here. With this I'm going to mill a card from Hidden Wisdom if he goes for that line, but it's cool. Auto Defense Matrix, so far I don't mind. He didn't have swipe last turn, or at least that's what it looked like. He does have lethal next turn. So I have 13, I would need another 5, but I don't have another 5. I can't redeem Tyrion, don't have this redemption set up. So I can trade on the board, or I can risk dying to some kind of savage roar and buff place. What if I just trade away 3 of these minions on the board? Being 5 off is pretty annoying. As if it just has a double Savage Roar play, that is probably going to be lethal. I could play Ziliax Redemption. This I can do. I think this is what I'll do. I'll trade away four of those minions. He might get the swipe. And now the swipe can kill the Commander Risa. Well, it has always been able to kill it. But if he attacks into the Ziliax, then that will be terrible for him. Because Ziliax is going to get resurrected twice. Yep, that's a, that's a double Ziliax, alright. And we get the Concede. Alright. No Bill Ring Ascent, but there is a Sun River Spy. I like Sun River Spies. Two Sun River Spies. That's like better than one Sun River Spy, isn't it? Okay, so our first three turns are pretty set here. Whether they are going to be good enough is another matter. Sun River Spy Arena it is. And I have a redemption behind that, but we can just dagger it down, of course, after it gets redeemed. I probably don't need a Never Surrender here. Right, all the defense matrix is better. If he wants to dagger down some stuff. But face or trade. I think I'm trading that away so that he doesn't have a, such a good way to kill it. Yeah, so I that's what it is. Have you tried the dual version of Pally? No, I think dual is a terrible card. You should never play it. It doesn't seem powerful at all. Well. Oh. That was a lot of eviscerating and things. Fine. Hidden Wisdom. And all the defense matrix. I think I'm fine with this. Let's hit face. What can we do? Yeah, triggers the auto defense matrix. 
That's okay. But then what? How many cards is he going to play? Oh, he's going to play just the waggle pick. Alright, alright. Too early for Countess. Our redemption up again. This could be better. This game could be going better. Absolutely. There's still two cards in the Rogue's hand that he kept. But Countess is going to draw some cards in two turns. It might be too late. Rogue might have gained the tempo advantage at that point. Okay, now we get the health. So Backstab doesn't kill that, but... There's more to come, including some free 3-3 pirates, potentially. But then he has to choose pirates and no hit, or no pirates. Also, I get to draw some cards, which is nice because I like cards. Are you really going to just throw the pirate back into your hand? Fine. I mean, you can do that. It is possible. Blood and plunder. Well, Peacekeeper doesn't do a whole lot here. Neither does Never Surrender, to be honest. He can just dagger this one down. Oh dear. Peacekeeper does give me a little bit stronger minion on the board. It means that I sacrifice these on the pirate. Peacekeeper. Hero power. We'll probably have to go with one consecration here. The kill that. Because I can't need the peacekeeper in case he finds something useful. But do I want to set up a never surrender now? Good against fan. Nah, I think hero power is better. Because he could just dagger down the to one anyway, even if I had an Ever Surrender up. Next turn is Ashmore. Draw some cards. He will have two saps. Bell Ring is entry, but there are no more secrets in the deck. So that's kind of awkward then. Ashmore time. Time to find that Ziliax. And hope for no saps. But he has so many cards. All these resources should give him a great advantage here. This covers another Paladin card. Oh dear. Vendetta. Vendetta is size of an agent. Vendetta Shadow Bolt. That works out. I need to get the mechanical well out there, but Sap is such a huge punish. Need to get some powerful stuff out there. Sap will punish me very, very hard. Yeah, it is from, from another class, you're right. Second waggle pick. Then going all face. But I should be able to handle going all face fairly nicely, right? Or maybe not. I mean, I could just double trade. And then I could Ciliax down this one and heal for 10. Sap will be awful. But isn't it always? If I do Ciliax, I can also de do Rissa into Never Surrender. So even if he saps the Ciliax. That's probably the best line. Because I have 7 from hand, so I have 10 overall. I can't kill him here. So I probably need to heal up. Trade here. Trade here. Get the 7-7. Seven, seven. Ziliax on the 7-7. Seven, seven. Kill this one and heal for 10. Play Rissa with my last secret. Play Rissa with the last secret. So if he saps this, then Rissa will at least have 7 health. Maybe keep Ziliax separated. No, I need the health. I need the health. Mm. 
Obviously, Sap is a big deal. But that was not a Sap. So he died. I think I'll try with this hand. I, I'm a little bit scared of the damage potential of Rogue. Ciliax was like the card that I maybe should have mulliganed. Peacekeeper, okay, is it really needed? Oh, a couple of definitely questionable things here, but we'll see. Trevor, why do you think token druids don't run Pounce and Savage Strikers? Because Pounce and Savage Striker are bad cards. That would be the reason. They don't have the card draw to spend on using cards like that, I don't think. So many options. I need to coin this entry next turn. And on 4 I will probably try to follow it up with the blade and this spy. So here comes the coin sentry. And should I have a secret for next turn, I can do spy blade. He's going to give me the card draw. Okay. In order to get an Edwin out there, all right, I see. I see what you did there. Well, now I can't do my original plan because I have to use a Peacekeeper. Do I want an auto defense matrix out there? No, because I want to play this next turn together with my... Together with my good stuff. I'm going to have to Peacekeeper that. And I can't have the auto defense. I can't have all my secrets spent for next turn. Yeah, it gets a little bit more health, so you have to do something more about it. It's very low on cards, which is good. That can potentially help me out a lot. Kangor is really interesting, but maybe not yet. Is this turn just the Matrix, the Spy and the Blade? Blade kills the tree tree. I think that's what this turn is all about. The other defense matrix the spy, the blade, kill the tree tree. I go down to 18 of course, but I still have Ciliax to heal me up. I just don't want Ciliax to get zapped now, so that I'll be able to get it back from the Kangors. He just wants everything to go to face. Surprising plan, I suppose. He just wants everything to go to face. Okay. Well, it's Tiliax time. But I have an auto defense matrix out there. It's difficult to get rid of Tiliax. But what do I want to kill here? Talnos gives him a card. I probably still have to kill it, right? Ciliax kills this one. Heals me up a little bit. Sun River Spy kills this one. I suppose I need to kill the Talnos even though it gives him a card. So there's two cards. Did he get something that kills the Ciliax? Oh no, he could. Well, that's not a combo effect. Oh, but that is a combo effect. But he just doesn't have the tools to get the held out there right now. Okay, so so far this is okay. It's actually going pretty well right now. Because I'm getting a ton of healing here. Now I can annoy a module onto this Ciliax. But I can bring that back with the Kangors later. Annoy a module to Ciliax. Okay, I should have enough healing here. 
I know your module wanted Ciliax and even if he has sap, then Ciliax doesn't... Well, Ciliax comes back to hand then. Yeah, Ciliax is not removed. Yeah, I like this. Ciliax kills the minion. This one kills the minion. I roll the hero power. Lucky is he has the he has the waggle pick and a couple of pirates. But I don't care if he kills the Ciliax, I only care if he if he throws the Ciliax back to my hand with sap. Which he could also do. I don't want the kings yet, right? I want the sentry and I want an Anoia module on the board. So that even if he's able to throw back some stuff, he can't get rid of this all. Sentry, so that we get another secret. Anoia module, but not magnetized on this Ciliax, but as a separate minion. More taunt forces on the board. Heal me up, my mechs. Heal me up. And hit the intruder in the face. Yeah, now that Wagglepick... Oh, well, now that Wagglepick can finally kill the Ciliax. But... It isn't quite enough now, is it? I want to find the Bellringer sentry. I might find one secret and some... No, that's the sentry at least. You're both close to legend. Legend means nothing. Not the time to set up Never Surrender yet. Hmm. Or redemption. N neither of those does anything with the hero power. Oh, that's annoying. I think I'm gonna set up this one though. Maybe now is the time to set up the Never Surrender too. Yeah, I don't have a good answer to it anymore over because I didn't draw any good cards. Well, I did draw the Bellaring as entry. It's a good card, it's just a bit slow on the slow side. Oh dear. This looks bad. He's looking for something to magnetize on these, obviously. But I still don't want to do anything. Next turn is the bell ring as entry. And then we'll see what happens after that. He could like coin Ciliax and be in a great spot. Hopefully not. And he can have shields. He kept most of his cards. I mulliganed everything because I didn't have anything useful. It's kind of a problem. I want to get those secrets out of my deck. He can do so many things. He can like coin... He could coin Dino Medic. Although that would trigger the... He can just play shields. Slam shields. I'm just doing a good job here. But I can... Well, I just draw absolutely terrible cards. Well, that kind of makes that happen. Now I got the redemption, but a bit late. He's playing some bad version of the deck, but it's not going to be enough because my hand is so bad. Okay, well, I've seen some Dragon Control Warriors. I have redemption, Hidden Wisdom, or the Defense Matrix. I can play the Anoia module there. It's okay. Because I could top deck Ciliax or War Gear or something. He might not have the tools. Although, obviously, this looks incredibly bad because his draw is good, my draw is terrible. This is not Secret Paladin, this is Mech Paladin. Completely different thing. Fort uh, my Ciliax. I could play kings on the Ciliax and kill the Hecklebot. I suppose I do want to kill the Hecklebot. Kings on the Ciliax? Seems like a pretty good idea. He can kill this, have that one redeemed. Well, we're killing that Hecklebot. I guess I'm playing the Spy too. Just Way too slow start. Yeah, I, I assumed that he would try to get the redemption going off on something else than these. But that might actually be a decent thing for me, if I can find my Kangors at some point. 
So now I've seen both shield slams. I've seen both Omega assemblies. This might not be too bad. Still have the auto defense matrix going on there. Because he's getting a ton of armor. Armor doesn't really matter anymore. Because of the Why did you why did you give me more stuff? That one I don't understand. Oh well. This one trades there. Then I'll play a mechanical whelp. And I'll play redemption. Until he goes face. Alright. Should I have traded? Because now this allows him to magnetize Ciliax onto this. And maybe it was incorrect to let him magnetize. We can also do some warpathing. That isn't very good though. This is not that great either. Because Ciliax just comes back. But I get the 772. I mean, I can just take 7 from Gedon, right? I could just take 7 from Gedon and play another mechanical whelp on the board. I get healed for 3 if I kill the Gedon with the Ciliax, after all. I mean, I have the Peacekeeper too, but... Getting Death Rattles out there in case of brawls... Just seems like a generally good idea. I think that just seems like a generally good idea. I'm killing the Gedon. Playing a mechanical whelp over there. And we're punching him in the face for seven. So he has he has a couple of Omega assembly mechs remaining. This is just a pure control warrior. Warpath, he has warpath and he has execute. I assume he has warpath and execute. Otherwise, this doesn't make much sense. Oh no, he had warpath and then Coin the super collider. Oh no, that was actually really, really strong. But I didn't have a way to play around that now, did I? I guess not really. If I had played the bell ring a sentry, that would not have been me. Yeah, oh, path super collider. That one I did not see coming. No more secrets in the deck. I need to find Kang counters or Kang Mors. I need to find them soon. I might not want to war gear into anything yet. But now he could just play a Dino Medic when I do it like this. This was not good. This was not good. Egg Palani has a 50 pressure. Yeah, this is extremely good. Yeah, I, that was a mistake because I, I realized it immediately when I figured that okay, he can do, just do Dino Medic here to counter that. There is my Countess, though. Yeah, I have no more Rush or Death Rattle minions. And I have Tyrion in the deck. Countess does draw my Tyrion. That's something. I think I can set up the secret. Let's do it like this. That's not a redemption. Created by Omega Assembly. Okay. Reasonable minion. Definitely. This is something I need to be his keeper. Then I don't get to play Tyrion yet. But when he finds his Ciliax, that's awkward. But if I play Tyrion, it just kills it. Probably need to Harrison here. And Peacekeeper, that one. Let's see. But the moment he finds his Ciliax, that's a problem. He still has two Brawls left as well. Now, because I ran out of steam a little bit, he got three draws. And one of them was the Ciliax. That is beautiful. That was a beautiful Ciliax. Beautiful Ziliax indeed. It 
it's not yet the time to play Kangors, right? Kangors can give me some Ziliaxis. Well, he does have only one card from his deck now. So, only two cards from his deck available next turn. So Brawl is actually really unlikely. Brawl is actually really unlikely here. I don't have that crew. It, it has to be the Kangor's time. If I don't get a taunt and he's able to use the weapon to kill a whelp, I still need to do this. And kill off that Ziliax. I think I'll roll the hero power too. So, Weapon can kill one of the whelps before a brawl. He has only two cards from his deck. That one is a mech. So... And does he have the tools? He does have a brawl. Oh, it was a... It wasn't a mech, it was a spell. A discovered spell. So, now he has one extra brawl. Not yet time to play Tyrion then. It's time to make both of these really big. And hit a lot of face. So if he happens to brawl, he might still die. He has used his Ziliax. He has used one Super Collider. But even if he has another Super Collider and Hero Power, he can't hit into something this big. Redemption, Sun River Spy, Coin Bell Ring a Sentry, have Kings. I might take this hand. You don't need the second one, you really want the first. No, it's not even that. You really want two of them. You really, really want two of them. I mean, I guess I have kind of an option to just get ensure the resurrect on the bell ring as entry, but I'm afraid that might be too slow. Let's see, rook kept just one card. I do like that, but I have the king's backup in case he has tug. Thunder River Spy Time. Run out of secrets after the first one every time. No, we didn't. We definitely did not. That is simply incorrect. That wasn't very powerful. Now I go into Sentry. And grab just the Hidden Wisdom. Not ideal, but okay. Next move, Rogue. Deadly Poison is in the bad card. That could even go together with something like a... something like an Eviscerate. It's still hard to get rid of both of these and the redeemed ones. He could also play that together with something like an SI7 Agent to kill the minion after the redemption. And still not trigger the Hidden Wisdom. We can have saps in that deck. So I have the option to kill the miscreant, but I have the option to push face. If I don't kill the miscreant, he can kill this one. Unless I use an Anoia module. I think I'll kings this fellow, kill the miscreant, and push face with that one. I think I like this approach. But he might not play 3 cards, so I might not get Hidden Wisdom value. And then he wants to kill the 6-4 rather than the 3-4. So Death Rattle is not going to trigger. Not quite yet. But can he kill the 6-4 and only play 2 cards? I mean, he can, probably. What do you have? I wonder, too. Sap? Hmm, I lucky. But how many cards are you going to play? Oh no, if you're shadow stepping that lucky, you're giving me some card draw. I love it. Ah, 
are rushing lucky. That's actually better. Does not give me card draw. Unless you play another one. You play another, you, you give me the cards. But they did that win. I did not find a peacekeeper this time. I mean, this is still what I need to do, but now I can actually lose this game if there's sap. He has five cards left. I didn't find a Peacekeeper in my top 13. The peacekeeper has been the card that has beaten all the Edwins today. This is the first game where I don't find the Peacekeeper. He still doesn't know if it's all the defense matrix. This combination of never surrender, he can still kill it though. He can still kill it twice. Unfortunate. Because with the Edwin coming in, with the dagger coming in, he can still kill this one twice. Tough. I have an auto defense matrix coming up. But if he had a sap, then would he have went through all that trouble? Options. Bell ring a sentry pulls an auto defense matrix. That's probably not good enough, right? Mechanical whelp. If he kills that and goes fade. If he saps that, that's the problem. I think I need to play the whelp. But if he has sap, then I have a problem. Is there a sap? Key question. I don't think there was a sap, because I think there were positions to play sap already. But he's touching the top deck card, and that could be a sap. If there's a 3 3 taunt pirate, that's kind of a problem too. We'll see. I guess Tug is still fine. Even though this is a lot of damage. This is a lot of damage, but I might still be able to do it. Depends on whether there's a Leroy or something. So I can do kings on this. Then you can kill the dead win. Then I need to play the Rissa. Let's see. It's tough. It's very, very tough. I'm not sure if I have enough time to get my Ziliax. Unless I top deck it naturally. I mean, Ashmore draws the Ziliax, but I might die in two turns. If there's a Leroy. There is a Leroy, and that's exactly lethal. Oh no. I couldn't go 9 and 0 to Legend. Too bad. But that was a nutty hand from the Rogue. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, Please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.